Welcome back to another Alliance War. This time around, four Loki is taking on XXX Shield. And this is going to be a very interesting Alliance War because not only do I have some mini boss action, but I've got some main boss action too. And I'm not just talking about trying to steal the glory after someone else does 90% of the job and they slip up and accidentally die at the end and I go in there and deal the rest of uh, the 10% health that's remaining or something like that. No. This is going to be my first time trying to actually solo a boss in Season 2 or any Season for that matter, or, man, I don't even know the last time I tried to solo a boss. This uh, this could be a first for me, actually. I don't know. But I've been trying to work on my skills, and I've got my Medusa by my side, so we're going to see if I can make it happen. Anyway, I've got Medusa, Black Bolt, and Nebula here because I'm taking Path 8. First fight up is going to be a 6-star tech champion, and it is going to be a Green Gobbles. And my goal here is always to try to end this first fight with 100% HP, and you're gonna see uh, that I kind of mess up here and it has a real impact on the rest of this war or I mean you know at least a slight impact I'll explain uh, I mean you can see he's gaining back a lot of health so I'm thinking alright I'm in the clear let me go ahead and put an armor shatter on this guy instead of just holding my special so I'll probably get back to a special one before I can take this guy down uh, and that was definitely a mistake so I'm gonna go ahead and launch the armor shatter right here and his HP is much lower than I thought it was gonna be uh, just due to the way that uh, Green Goblin works, he's much more likely to uh, be healing kind of up front in the fight. Um, and yeah, he's not really going to be healing up too much anymore. Uh, and it's kind of unfortunate because, yeah, you can see I'm missing a bit of HP. And I'm actually going to try to slow play it, let him heal a little bit. Maybe I can get that, that one bar of power. I don't want to do anything that's going you know, to be too risky or anything like that to, to make me potentially lose the fight. But, ah, darn, man. I was so close to that one bar of power. I just could not get it. And yeah, now I end up down like 10% HP, and now I have to decide between either using a potion to heal up this remaining uh, amount, which is, uh, you know, it's just one potion, it's not that big a deal. Um, uh, or I can uh, use a health a regen boost, and I'm actually going to go ahead and do that instead. Um, now, there's something that I tried to do here with, with this fight, too. Uh, I mean, th this this fight is just a four-star science champ, but I'm not worried about this fight. But uh, there's something else that I tried to do when it comes to the boost that I'm going to go ahead and put on right now. Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and put the 15% the regen on. And I'm also going to uh, use a 15% health boost as well, because I wanted to see if uh, the health boost would uh, increase the amount of healing that I get. Basically, I wanted to see what what that 15% heals. Does it heal your boosted HP or does it heal just, just your base HP? Uh, so I go ahead and do that. Couldn't remember. I think I've tested this before, but I honestly couldn't remember. I'm like, alright, fine. Let's just go ahead and test it again. And uh, we're going in against, um, against uh, Infinity War Cap here. And my health regen, it's working like a charm, of course. Going to go right back up to that 100% total. And at this point, I still can't tell if uh, if it's actually being affected by the boost or not. But you're going to see later on that I actually uh, use more powerful boost and put another 15% regen on, and I still uh, I, I still heal the same amount. So no, it actually does not is not affected by your uh, by your boosted HP. I don't know about synergies. Synergies sometimes they they are a little bit different, so it's possible that the tiny bit of health gain that I have from synergies might have an impact on this. But uh, I'll have to test that another time. Uh, the other reason why I chose that 15% boost instead of a potion is just because uh, I I I had a lot of the 15% regen boost, uh, and they actually were in the store at the time of uh, this war. So I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's just do that instead of uh, spending the glory on some potions. This is a little bit. Uh, hurting for those potions at the time. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and boost up big here because I'm going to take this uh, all the way to the boss. Let's go ahead and jump in this first fight here it is just a cosmic champion. I think it's a five-star cosmic champion. And this node is nothing too crazy, but I always take try to take my time here, focus on each one of these nodes to make sure I know exactly what I'm getting involved with this fight. And the main thing about this node is just that uh, that that limber. It's a heavy limber node, so you got to watch your parries. You don't want to uh, accidentally get parried yourself, especially against someone like uh, Ronin here, who is a very easy fight. But if you catch yourself stunned against this guy, and he throws another, uh, he throws a special and stuns you even more, or something like that, uh, it can actually get pretty nasty. So as long as you play it safe, super super easy, of course. And he goes down without too much of a fight at all. All right, next fight up, we've got. A five-star tech champion, and this is on Biohazard, and I've seen Sentinel here a whole bunch in the past, 
and I'm pretty sure that this is going to be Sentinel again. Although it really does not matter who is going to be on this node. Uh, once you bring in a champion like Nebula that gets around the biohazard portion of the node, it's not going to be too big of a threat at all. Um, and I've got Scatter Lens on, so I know it's not going to be that spidey since I see that it's a rank 4 5-star champion instead of the rank 5. And sure enough, yep, it is, it is a Sentinel. Uh, so my goal here is to try to build up shock charges as fast as I possibly can. Try to get my fifth shock charge. As soon as you have that, he cannot gain uh, any more analysis charges. The only thing I have to worry about from here is uh, dodging his specials. Still can't get it by those because, of course, those are still going to hurt. And then I also uh, don't want to parry him at all because if I parry him, then I transfer those shock charges and then I'll have to build up another five or else uh, I'm not going to be able to shut down his analysis charges. Now, once I get uh, you know most of the way through the fight, I can unleash those shock charges for some extra damage, uh, but until then, yeah, I'm just going to be as careful as I possibly can. Now, last time I fought this guy, or one of the last few times I fought this guy, I did unleash a big special 2 combo, but uh, I, I kind of just felt like getting the regular hits in this time, trying as, as hard as I can to get away from uh, relying too much on the shocks just because they do have a tendency to get me into trouble. I've got to practice, you know, building up the shock charges uh, in, a, in a safer way than I than I have in the past. Um, but he's he's getting pretty worn down. He's at 32%. I feel pretty safe at uh, dropping these shock charges on him the next uh, time that uh, I find myself in a good spot here. Get him down. He's almost at that 20%. I unleash the shocks for that extra damage. You can see it's ticking for over 1,000, and he's just going to... Uh, I want to say bleed out, but of course they're not bleeds, so yeah, shock out, I guess. It doesn't really make sense, but anyway. Moving on. Sentinel down. Thank you, Nebula. We've got a five-star unawakened mutant champion here, which, uh, of course, always you always think that it's going to be a Nightcrawler, but of course it could be other champions as well. It could be something like... Uh, could, could be something like a Cable here. Cable wouldn't be too bad on Awakened, although he doesn't have that power gain when he's not. But uh, it's just a Flare node, so it really doesn't matter who they're going to stick on this node. They're going to get chopped down in a matter of uh, in a matter of seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump in this fight, and sure enough, it is Nightcrawler. Okay, no problem. Uh, just need to make sure that he does not evade against me. So get the uh, get the switch and one five hit combo. Let's see if he can survive another five hit combo. No, he cannot. Uh, he is down. <laughs> All right, good. At least I didn't have to use a lot of potions uh, this time. Uh, so that's nice because I do uh, like I said got some mini boss and main boss action. All right, so. Here are the interesting fights of this war. The two uh, most inter interesting fights, at least. Uh, we've got, uh, on the debuff immune node, we have a uh, five-star classic Ultron. And uh, I wasn't even planning on taking the boss when I first started this, uh, when, when I was first assigned this path for this war, but, uh, you know, basically I was assigned this path for this Ultron. Uh, just because, you know, it's like the safest option to have an auto-blocking champion, class advantage. Even though I can't armor shatter him to shut him down completely, it's still, uh, you know, I have a pretty good odds at uh, coming out of this fight with all attack bonuses intact. Go ahead and put on a 15% regen boost because I'm going to use it for the, uh, the last remaining bit of HP that I have here along with the next fight as well. And, uh, yeah, you can see I was, I was, uh, I'm still healing for 116. That's exactly what I was healing for before when I only had a 15% health boost on versus uh, basically boosted to the teeth at this point with all the big boy boosts active. Uh, the only thing to worry about here is to watch his evade, and it's something that you kind of just have to count in your head. Uh, you don't have to count exactly the, the, the seconds that he's going to evade. He evades about every... Uh, I think it's about every five seconds or seven seconds, something like that. But uh, as long as you know that if you haven't hit him in a couple of seconds, you're only going to want to dash in one time and then immediately go into a block or, or dash out. Uh, so yeah, that's what I do here, basically. And I'm just looking to bait out heavy attacks for the most part since it is debuff immune, which means he is stun immune as well. So uh, I, most of the time I do just go into a block immediately following his uh, evades like that. I uh, got a little bit of unfazed love there, although I don't think it actually mattered. I think I would have been fine even if I didn't trigger unfazed off of his unstoppable, uh, or, or, or off of his evade. Uh, it just happened again, actually. You can see my L2 actually crit a whole bunch there, which is fantastic, because the L2 that I hit him with initially in this fight really did, like, next to nothing in terms of damage, man. Uh, it, 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 if, it, if you don't crit against uh, Ultron uh, when he has one of his armor ups active, he's actually a really tanky champion. He gains a ton of armor from his armor up. It's, 
It's one of the highest armor ups uh, in the entire game for sure. Okay, so now we come to the Iceman boss, and it is a 565 Iceman. This guy's got 350,000 HP, and at this point I'm thinking, man, what did I sign myself up for? Why am I even here? Let somebody else do it. There's better fighters in my alliance, man. I'm pretty scared. Uh, I mean, actually, we, we were ahead a few kills in this war, so it, it wasn't going to uh, cost us the war. Uh, me going in here like this if I did uh, if I if I do end up dying um, but yeah of course I still don't want to die I've only died or, or I've only lost one attacker uh, kill bonus the entire season up until this point so I don't want to I don't want to make it two and I want to get one of these uh, boss kills under my belt so get the armor shatter going on him you can see I'm taking a lot of damage from that initial cold snap down to 76 percent I've still got my uh, my regen boost on though so I'm gonna heal a little bit of that up uh, as long as I uh, you know don't uh, miss time dodging an L1 I should be fine we got plenty of health to work with as far as like blocking and baiting out his heavy attacks to find my openings and oh crap I just got hit by a special one look at that cold snap damage man not only am I taking 734 damage every half second but I also am about to take a massive amount of damage boom I took 7700 damage from that uh I uh, can't remember what that other debuff is called that Iceman has, but at this point, I'm very scared. He still has 60% health, uh, and yeah, I I have enough health to work with to uh, kind of, you know, bait out heavy attacks, but if I get clipped by another special, it's lights out. And I, I didn't even want to push him to a special 2 there, because I'm not that good at dodging special 2s, but I do get that dodge off. I'm going to uh, try to keep him to his special 1s from here on out. Uh, I mean, when it, whenever I do have armor shatter on him, I am doing some pretty good damage. He's taking uh, a lot of damage on those crits, so just got to be consistent with dodging the special one, and I should be good to go. Get a uh, nice, nice juicy L2 there to get in some good damage. Going to have to reapply that armor shatter the next time I get an L1 available to me. And when I, my, my whole goal here for dodging uh, Iceman's special ones uh, is whenever I do a five hit combo, I kind of just stand there and block. If I, uh, if I know that I'm going to be dodging a special one, if I know, like if I have to bait out a special one, then I only do a four hit combo and back out. If you're having uh, trouble timing uh, dodging the special one, give that a try. Can I get the armor shatter on him once again? And just going to try my best, like I said, to not push him to an L2 because for some reason I just hate dodging those L2s. He's almost down, man. My heart is beating so fast at this point. He's, he's healing up a lot from that willpower that's been on the entire fight. And one more L2, and he is down, man. I got my boss uh, solo. This is this might be the only time you guys ever see a, b a boss solo out of me. Uh, but man, I was happy with this, guys. I was really happy with this. Uh, 134 hits. I was like uh, jumping out of my chair, basically shaking nervously the entire time. My heart was beating so fast from the start of that fight, uh, and especially after I got hit by the special one, I thought uh, I thought I was gonna throw up at that point. Uh, but got it done. Held it together. Just barely got the solo without uh, too much health left on my. Uh, I'm um, a Medusa there, but very happy with that. The best way I could describe the feeling of soloing that boss is like when you're watching a movie about a really nerdy main character, and after going through all these trials and tribulations, they finally get laid. And after they get laid, then they're like walking down the street with their head held high and stuff like that. That was me walking down the street after uh, finally getting some boss kill action. Alright, that is going to do it for this video, guys. Good war to you guys over in XXX, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.